Okay, so let's look at oxidation states. What is an oxidation state? Well, first of all, an oxidation state is a formalism. An oxidation state is a formalism. Often, students will confuse an oxidation state with what they actually believe to be the charge on the metal iron. Essentially, although we use these oxidation states, they're very useful for us across chemistry, it's not exactly the same as saying this is the formal charge or the amount of positive charge accumulated on a metal iron. Because essentially you might start off with an iron 3 plus iron, but if you donate electrons to it, then obviously it does become less positively charged overall. However, this formalism is very helpful to us in chemistry. And how do we arrive at it? Well, essentially, if you have a molecule like boron trifluoride, so boron trifluoride is familiar to us. In the case of boron trifluoride, what are the oxidation states of boron and the oxidation states of fluorine in that molecule? Well, what you have to do is you have to look at the boron-fluorine bonds. What you have to do is decide which is the most electronegative element. And in the case of a fluorine-containing compound, that ought to be very easy. It is the fluorine that is the most electronegative element. So if you break a bond heterolytically, if we have a boron-fluorine bond and we cleave this boron-fluorine bond in a homolytic fashion, we're basically creating a boron radical and a fluorine radical. If we cleave the bond in a heterolytic fashion, then what we are doing is we are going to take the pair of electrons. We're not going to share it between the elements. We're going to take the pair of electrons to the most electronegative element. So if we do that, we'll end up with a boron plus and a fluoride minus. So this is heterolytic cleavage. This is what we are doing in our thought experiment. We're giving the pair of electrons to the most electronegative element, which is fluorine. So if we do that, of course, we've got three of these bonds. That means we'll have a boron 3 plus species and a fluoride minus. And if it's boron 3 plus, we say it's got the oxidation number of plus 3. And another way of saying that is in oxidation state 3. So let's discuss a set of rules. The fundamental one here is that the sum of all the oxidation numbers of all the atoms, all the species in the compound, is equal to the charge. So we're going to be setting up a nice little, very simple algebraic expression to help us to solve these problems. And then, essentially, what we need to know are some oxidation numbers. Because you can, if you have only one equation, you can only have one unknown if you're going to solve it. So the rest of the species in there have got to be known values. So there are some constants, really, in oxidation number chemistry that we can consider. Now, hydrogen. Hydrogen is a bit of a pain because hydrogen is, can exist in oxidation state plus one and minus one. Because if you look at the electronegativity of hydrogen, it's bang in the middle. It's much simpler for group one. Oxidation state is plus one. Group two, the oxidation state is plus two. If it's a halide compound, Remember, fluoride is always minus one. Chloride is normally minus one. But if chlorine is in combination with more electronegative elements like fluorine or oxygen, then you can have higher oxidation states of chlorine. But halides, it would be minus one. Now, this is one that can lead to a little bit of confusion. If the ligand is a neutral molecule, so the, mo the ligand is not like chloride, it's not an anion, it's like water, it's a neutral molecule which can exist independently of the metal complex. So you can have a water molecule perfectly happily before you coordinate it to the metal, and all it's doing is dative donation of a lone pair, then its oxidation number is zero. The same is true of a phosphine ligand, that's a neutral molecule that just donates a lone pair. A carbon monoxide ligand, neutral molecule that donates a lone pair. And then, of course, you can have other ligands which are like halide ligands, which are negatively charged species, like a cyanide ligand, a thiocyanide ligand. These are negatively charged ligands which have an oxidation number of minus one. So let's take a simple example, nickel dichloride. So what we're interested in here is the oxidation state of nickel. And I normally give that the superscript Y. The unknown in our equation is going to be Y. 
this is a neutral molecule. Nickel dichloride is a neutral molecule. So what you've got is Y plus 2 times minus 1, which is the oxidation number of a chloride ligand, is equal to 0. So Y minus 2 is equal to 0. So if we really have to push the algebra to its limits, we need to add 2 to both sides of this equation. So we're going to get Y is equal to plus 2. So there are no surprises to you there. But that is how we do this systematically.